muscle cars meet up with street machines as this episode of Rides reworks a pop culture icon and takes it to an even higher level. Joining a pro builder and his team as they put their spin on a legend that has both a mystique and a devoted following, the Mustang Fastback. It's a totally new look at a classic model with an overhaul of the body and the engine compartment. All performed at a shop that has turned out another car that many have called the finest street machine ever built. It's the Mustang and many other cars that go faster than you can even clock. All here, all now, on Rise. A few miles outside of Chicago, across the street from a couple of grain silos, is a little shop owned by Jack Trepanier. Right next door is his son's shop, another small business in Mantino, Illinois, a little town that turns out some really big cars. Troy Trepanier. In a few short years, he's played a key role in merging custom hot rods with the world of high-speed street machines. For those who know cars and know his work, they'll come right out and tell you. Troy's an original. He's a start of something a new, a new trend, you know, a young guy with a lot of energy. Troy's a great guy, and the cars that he builds are just, they're just knockouts. And they're real cars. I mean, there's a lot of cars out there that are just kind of for show, and these are for real. This is the Quadraduce, a little roadster with some serious stats. The Quadraduce is all-wheel drive, which is the only 32 Ford ever to be all-wheel drive, and it had a 600 horsepower small block fuel-injected Chevy in it. The car goes zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. It's at a point you're ready to pass out trying to drive this thing and pull so hard. Zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. For a little more perspective on the matter, this $275,000 Lamborghini would get there in 3.6, and this million dollar Enzo Ferrari can do it in 3.3. Both supercars have V12 engines, while the Quadraduce is rolling with a V8. Of course, it helps when those 600 horses are pushing a mere 2,500 pounds. It was just kind of funny, we'd go out to California at the shows and stuff to some of our friends that build 32s and say, you know, well, you guys out here only build half the car. We make ours all-wheel drive. Untypical, even in the world of custom cars. That's the kind of creation that comes out of his shop. We build performance-oriented cars that you drive versus show cars. I mean, if you want show cars, we know how to do a show car, but a Rad Rides car is one you get in and you're not afraid to go out and torture it and use the brakes, use the power. <laughs> A radical 40 Ford, an elegant 37, a 600 horsepower super truck, a one of a kind flathead deuce. It's a crowded shop, but even with the full workload, the gang is gearing up for their next big project. eBay Motors wants to build a car. The task, find an old rack online, restore it using parts found on the eBay Motors website, and turn this old pony into a killer street machine in four months. eBay Motors will unveil the final project at the world-famous SEMA show in Las Vegas, but that's 16 weeks away. For now, this team of young hotshots want to see what kind of hand this 67 Mustang Fastback has dealt them. Um, the floor pans are good, I guess, because they replaced them and everything else is pretty, pretty molested under here. Whoever did the work at one point in time definitely didn't do a very good job, so once we get it stripped apart and sandblasted, we can probably see a little bit more of what we got to work with here. And, uh, doesn't look too bad. I mean, there's really nothing straight on. So we're gonna have a lot of lining and straightening to do, get all the panels to fit. Get the tire size down too, because we need to set the ride height. Troy's gonna get, get his old man involved. It's been box. that way for decades. Boy, Jack and his boy and building height. cars. Every day for the last 20 years. It can be a touchy relationship to him, so father and son, because you gotta learn to keep your mouth shut, because now he knows more than you do, and you're trying to tell him how to do things. My dad's a bigger knucklehead than I am. I mean, we have a, 
a lot of fun. And uh, but he's the funny guy. You know, a lot of the one-liners that I say and you know take the credit for, I heard them from him. It's and as any proud father would do, Jack is always eager to reveal his son's greatest asset. His dad. <laughs> We can see a lot of what's going on here, but it's, there's a lot of questions to be answered yet. Bob Thrash starts to scratch out the idea for this transformation. He and Troy have decided to update the look of this classic to resemble the Mustang simply known as the 05. As Troy sent Brian Ferguson to retrieve the car from its home in Minnesota, Brian recalls the thought he had when he first laid eyes on the new project. This car is it's going to take some real work. Troy's answer was, you know, just bring it home. We'll, we'll take care of whatever it needs. This car has no clue what it's in for now that it's made the long journey from Minnesota to Mantina. The man's wife that we picked the car up from. She knew that I was driving straight there and straight back and that it was a long, it's basically eight hours up and eight hours back. So she actually baked like three dozen chocolate chip cookies with walnuts and gave them to me. And I thought that was a nice gesture on her part. So we load the car up and head for home and Probably the first 50 miles I ate, the first dozen cookies. <laughs> no. <laughs> As the old car is taken apart, a lot of questions are answered, and the team starts to see what's possible with this vehicle and its assortment of original and replacement parts. Even in this early hour, it looks like the project could be something of a total teardown, a complete do-over that might eventually incorporate only a small percentage of the original car. As the 351 Windsor is removed, Troy and his team can tell that the car has had its fair share of dramatic impact. Because after taking the engine out, you can see where we knew the car had some damage in the front, the way the fenders fit. And now that we've taken it out, you can see this thing was, it was just cream somewhere. And somebody did a terrible job of putting it back together. The big thing that made me nervous was looking at the front of the car, it was twisted. So I knew the car had been wrecked or jumped or something had happened to it. And I thought, I don't know how we're going to get it back straight. You can only see so much when it's all together. So you get it apart, and there's always a surprise. You know, we always say, man, I wonder if these cars could tell a story where they've been. It'd be a pretty interesting story, you know, especially after seeing this here, because it was probably definitely airborne at one time in its life. As deconstruction continues, builder Andy Leach sees sleepless nights ahead for everybody. And we started tearing it down, and it just seemed we just kept taking it apart and it just kept getting worse. Uh, you know, it didn't look that bad when we first saw it. We knew there were some serious issues with the car, but we didn't think it was that bad. And then the more it came apart, it was just one thing after another. Yeah. Jesus, man, everything on this thing. They've got, they've got the best assortment of bolts I've ever seen. Some are metric. The full picture brings new plans. Strength is a big factor with muscle cars. If there's a problem that's gonna get in the way of super high speeds, that problem just might have to be surgically removed and replaced. You can take all those parts off and clean them up, do the body work, but if you put them back on a twisted frame, you're still gonna have a twisted car, no matter how pretty it is. So that was a little nerve wracking. That's when Troy decided to cut the front of the car off from the firewall forward and on a unibody that's a big no-no because a lot of things can happen. In the years before 1967 many cars were built by attaching body parts to a frame 
The unibody process combined the body and the chassis into one piece. Models like this Mustang are built around this type of construction, so cutting the front end off actually means cutting the car in half. It's a big job, so out come the big toys, the plasma cutters. Ten minutes later, it's all over. Ooh, that worked good. With the old front end now yesterday's news, the hunt is on for a donor car to supply a new forward section. But work will still go on with the body part that's here, the beaten shell that sits there and waits for the next big step. The next step then, you have you guys with the stripper, get the gloves out and the putty nice and just peel all the paint back down to the bare metal, right into the body filler. It's time to bring out the strippers. Chemicals that mix in a plastic cup even though they can take on 25 year old enamel. We're chemically stripping the body here. We choose to do it this way. There's several ways to do it. You can you can media blast it, DA strip it, this works fast, we do it in the shop here. Then after we get the chemical stripping done, we'll come and we'll sandblast all the structural areas where we wouldn't warp with the sandblaster, door jams, roof rails, floor pans, get everything clean, that way when we come back and start putting the car back together or doing any repair, everything's already stripped onto bare metal and we're not stopping all the time to clean stuff back to weld it. There are other options for giving a car a new paint job. None of them as extensive or time consuming as the plan now underway. It'll get to where it's weightless right there for a minute. Okay, come around. Okay, Moose, lock her down, big man. Looking better than it did earlier. Still a little rough, though. Won't be long. Clearly, before it was a red car, it was a green car. A green car that's now stripped and disassembled into a few hundred pieces. I'm gonna pitch the hood, pitch the fenders, keep the doors, pitch the dash pad, pitch the springs. We'll go through the rear end, reuse it. Seats will recover. Uh, deck lid to keep, aftermarket bumpers, possibly a chin spoiler. All the interior pieces will just go through, clean up, smooth out. And then all the miscellaneous little pieces, wiring harness, dash knobs, air vents, all gone. We'll update all that stuff to new technology. As they work to update the 67 using styling cues from the 05, Troy and the gang come up with the name, the Fast Forward Fastback. And with less than four months to build it, they're gonna have to hurry. Troy Trepanier and his team at Rad Rides are building a show car for eBay Motors. It's a 67 Fastback, and at this point, it's in need of a front end. After a couple of days searching online, a donor car is found in the form of a 68 Mustang Coupe. This is a little bit of a challenge. It's fun because we're taking, we've taken the whole front end off with no really measurement points. So we're just going to go by, well, this one's going to go back on another car, and we're going to make it line up. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. There's you know, cutting, welding involved, and it's a big part of the car. Once we get past this point, the fun will start. The old front end came off in 10 minutes, but it's taking four hours for the team to take the doghouse off this 68. But Troy knows the graft will take. The 67 and 68 are twins from the doors forward. Meanwhile, a present by way of an old friend arrives. Angelo GM Petroni from Ford Racing has sent the new muscle for this evolving fastback. And as cool as this gift is, everyone knows Troy's gonna give it even more muscle. 400 horsepower, a little over 500 with the supercharger on it. We'll take the intake off here, and that's where the electronic fuel injection intake will go. We'll set a tubular headers on there. Do maybe a satin charcoal finish on the block. Have Glenn make some valve covers and pulleys. So while changes begin on the engine, Andy, Levi, and Moose keep working on the 68, cutting and chopping an inch at a time. Before long, a new front end is available for the project car. Uh, 
I heard Bert's over. To many of today's youngest hot rod builders, Troy Trepanier represents a new breed of both muscle car and street machine. And that youth is reflected in his team. He can just about do it all, but he's the first one to tell you that he can't do it all because he knows it takes a team to build a car. A very young team in this case. Andy Leach is a 25-year-old fabricator who's built cars of his own. Jared Zimmerman is able to do it all, from the mechanical to the cosmetic. Levi Green graduated from Wyoming Tech, showing experience beyond his 21 years. Ryan Kersher is the new body man here at the shop. Of course, the young at heart is represented by Brian Ferguson, known to the world as Moose, a nickname that comes by way of some very strong forearms. This group that he has now, you literally have to turn the lights out at night to get him to go home. The graft was a success, proven as it came back from its very first stages of body work. With two weeks gone, the unibody is perfected, sealer coated, and ready for the crucial next step, building the engine compartment. It's a step that's no small thing here at Troy's. A lot of guys try to make a statement with winning an award or a trophy somewhere. We make our statements in the engine compartments. That statement is loud and clear. The rides of Troy Trepanier mix street machine cool with muscle car power, borrowing more than a few tricks from the world of racing. The 400 horsepower engine for this Mustang will be no exception. It'll hit 500 horses with its new supercharger on the way and, incredibly enough, if all that machinery proves to be too high for the hood, these guys don't just slap on a fiberglass scoop, they actually retool the motor. Whatever it takes to create the perfect engine compartment. Take this thing off, Moose, and then we'll put the fuel injected and take it back on and see if it clears. I don't think it's gonna, but we'll, uh, we'll see. It is an engine, it's something that's powering the car, but we're trying to really make a mechanical statement with it. And sometimes we leave a lot of the stuff raw fabricated, because you're, you know, you're showing how really good of a fabricator you are. You're not hiding everything under covers and stuff. It's gonna be close by enough to put the fenders on to see. As elaborate as Troy's engine compartments are, everything functions under there. It has a real reason for being there and not just a cosmetic purpose. The motor isn't something that's allowed to expand beyond the engine compartment. That's a fact here. These builders will shave fractions off a manifold before ever obstructing the driver's view by even an inch. We'll take about a half inch out of here. We'll take the spacer, that's an inch and an eighth. So that's inch and five eighths, and we can probably take a little bit out of the other thing. So we can get pretty close on that, maybe lower the motor mounts. We'll probably lose some low end torque because we're losing a lot of runner length in here, but we'll make up for it with the supercharger. You'll never know the difference. If you ran it on a dyno, you'd probably see a difference a little bit, but nothing that you'd ever feel seat of the pants with this thing with a supercharger on it. Some guys will chop the top off their car. These guys will chop the top off their engine. To me, the engine compartment is a car on its own. With every bit of room needed for this tricked out motor, even valve covers will be swapped out, allowing more space for the Paxton supercharger. These will work. Often the joining the team is Bob Thrash, designer, artist, and longtime okay. friend of the Turpanier family. Looks, really a talent good. who it knows what's what, what, whether he's at a sketch pad it or an engine compartment. compartment. Maybe we should put the hood on because it's probably deceiving how much room yeah. there is, you know, because it's got like five to push in six degrees of tilt on a motor right now. Oh, so, so it, it needs could, to come down it in could come down a hair. I'd so say that would probably help. half yeah. inch. Yeah. You know, we could probably drop it a half inch in the front. I don't think it would. Yeah. The oil panning ain't, ain't going to be an wow. issue. We can always shorten it a little bit if we have to. After shaving the intake, lowering the engine mounts, and tossing out the spacer, they got their needed two well, inches for the supercharged the engine. With all this attention to detail, eBay Motors is getting a bargain. If we built this car for a customer to this level, same thing, it'd probably be about 125000 while $125,000 sounds like a lot, that's not even half the story. The whole story is all about the details. That's where all the time gets put into these cars, is all the little stuff that we're doing. 
that makes that big picture. When somebody sees it at the end and you're like, well, what do you got in that car? You know, if you'll say, you know, $300,000, you're like, are you crazy? How can you possibly have that in it? That is a very good question. And to fully understand the scope of the answer, all you have to do is pop that hood. This is Chicane, a twin turbo 1200 horsepower street machine that began life as a 1962 Chevy Biscayne, now taking flight as a four speed overdrive automatic dynamo. Probably our feeling is, and evidently the whole world agreed this year, and yeah, the best street machine built to date because no matter where you went with this car, we don't really compete. But all the magazines keep giving it car of the year and hot rod of the year and Chevy high car of the year. Good guys, it's just, uh, it's a phenomenal car. It's the fastest, scariest thing you'd ever want to ride in. On that car, it's pure acceleration from start to finish. It never, ever stops pulling as hard as it does right off the line. I've never felt anything pull like that at it like a 60 mile an hour roll. It's just almost as if you were stopped and forward the car again. Unbelievable. It, the only thing I could compare it to is being in an airliner takeoff. It actually made a thousand foot pounds of torque at 4,000 RPMs, which is just unheard of for small block Chevrolet. And if those numbers don't mean anything to you, how about these numbers? All coming from guys who know a little something about really fast cars. They'll basically go from 70 to 135 miles an hour in probably one and a half seconds. And it goes from mundane to insane in just a nanosecond. Too fast for me. <laughs> That's why my hair is white. Two months ago, this car was just another old Mustang. Now the fast forward fastback has a new skin. Its sealer coat has been covered by a Rad Rides trademark a custom two-tone paint job. But that's not even the biggest change for this redone unibody. And like any great piece of rolling art, it's all about the details. This was the original quarter extension vent that went in here. What we like to do, being we're kind of going to the theme of an 05 Mustang, is there are a lot of hard edgy lines and shadow boxing, what we did here. So this way, it still breaks up the sail panel so it doesn't look heavy but it, it's a little bit something different than it probably hasn't been done on this car before. Another thing that we've done down in this scoop, this is the stock piece, this pot metal piece. There was two of them that went in here and just kind of finished off as a little vent area. What we've done is we've made a pass through here. We're gonna put a piece of honeycomb like egg crate like the new 05 Mustang will have. And we've kind of taken this theme off the hood a little bit. So it'll have a little piece of uh, honeycomb here. We'll probably do the same in the grill. That way it's more late model than just uh, the stack grill. On the back here, the stock car has these pot metal trim pieces that there used to be half inch holes in here that these would bolt on, then you'd bring the light in from the back, so you'd have a deal like this, and then the trim would be around it, which kind of looked heavy. So there again, seeing with the 05 Mustang theme, we got rid of these, we filled the holes in here, and then tuned these areas up a little bit, because now you've got to have a better fit because you don't have the trim to hide it. And then now this is the look that we'll end up with, which is a lot cleaner. Builder Andy Leach reminds us that some of the body changes were just a little bit bigger. Basically the whole back half of the car we rebuilt. The only panel that really stayed was the roof. But it's clear that all that hard work was worth it. That thing is going to be mean. It's turning out way nicer than I ever thought it would. The body isn't the only one getting a paint job. Parts of the engine and the transmission are being masked and treated for prep. With the majority of the bodywork completed and the engine compartment underway, the car has gotten this far almost without a hitch. But with only eight weeks to go and hundreds of tasks yet to address, there's still a lot of car to build. With the glass being fit into the rear, front, and top, the car starts to find its shape again. Meanwhile, young Levi Green looks forward to his first SEMA show, the party where the car will debut. And I'm kind of excited to see what that's like, unveiling the car and see people's reactions. Hope it's good. It's going to be big, I think. A lot of people know about it already, and it's not even out. Once, it, once people actually start seeing it in person, it's going to be a big deal. 
Levi's project of the moment is preparing the rear end for its new suspension, adjusting and welding in places where the sun may never shine. This Mustang is in for the most stable glide of its life. Actually, this whole area is being updated for more than smooth sailing. The increased horsepower would have been real bad news for the old leaf spring suspension. Jared gets things ready for the next step, bringing together new state-of-the-art parts with a unibody that's older than Jared himself. This car is going to have a lot more horsepower than it did from the factory. So the original leaf spring suspension was no good. Um, we're going to replace it with this four bar style suspension that will, in essence, keep the rear end from turning when torque is applied to it from the engine. Next step, what we're going to do now that we have this located, tack welded, um, we're going to bring the rear end in and the four bar pieces and uh, see if it all sets in place where we want it to. And if that's good, then we'll go ahead and weld this all in final and go from there. And speaking of welding, few in the world of custom cars can weld like Troy Trepanier, an artist who learned his craft at an early age, from his grandfather, a plumber who taught his grandson how to torch soda cans together. Some guys, when they you know, build cars, their art form is a pencil, drawing cars. Well, I've never was any good at drawing, so my, my pencil is a welding rod. To me, I like looking at cars that are fabricated, like race cars. If you go see a real good race car fabricator, everything's raw and you can see all the welds are exposed because you know, they're not trying to cosmetically paint everything and make it look good. So you can really see a true fabricator a lot in the racing world. And some of the stuff we do, we leave our welds exposed. You know, it's not, well, it's all covered up and painted. You don't know what's underneath it. The experts say that a good weld should look like a row of nickels. But to move on to currency of a larger variety, this is what one of Troy's welds looks like on a $250,000 car. Returning to the fastback, Levi resumes work on his assigned portion of the project. It's now time to get under the car to see if the newly tuned piece is going to help in an area that's a major concern for Troy, the stance. This should probably get us close enough where we can put an axle on a wheel on it, then we'll have to notch that, put it up or bar, you know, to really hammer it up into the floor later, yeah. To test the stance, the axle, the rotors, and everything that handles the transfer of power from the engine to the 20 inch rear wheels is temporarily assembled. Meanwhile, Billet Specialties sends over four custom one-off rims. It's got the double throwdown down rail spit shine on these on both sides. Not only is Troy checking out the look of the new rims, he's also checking out the backspace to make sure it clears the wheel well. If it doesn't clear, the fix could be to change the width of the wheel. But luckily, that doesn't have to happen here today. So what is exactly you do here? Well, I do all the spark plug installation. Troy installs his custom-made pulleys and brackets, all to complete a one-of-a-kind engine that's going into a one-of-a-kind Mustang. And here in Mantino, Illinois, the clock is ticking. This 67 Mustang, transforming at Rad Rides by Troy. It's been altered, painted, and it's coming together in a way that builder Troy Trepanier knows. It's been that way for a while, ever since it was apparent that Troy knew how to build and rebuild cool cars. Well, it started to be pretty evident when we redid his grandfather's car for about the third time, and it, it got quite a bit of notoriety in the magazines, and. Uh, People started to look around at him because he's a clean-cut kid from the Midwest, no problems, you know, apple pie and American flag situation. And then the next car we did was a 50 Buick, and that car got him Hot Rod of the Year from Hot Rod Magazine. And I think he was only probably 19 or 20 when that happened. After building a series of notable cars, including this little Hot Rod for his parents, Troy went on to build the car that would literally change his life. This is the Sniper. It's 
It's a car Troy built when he was only 25. It's a 54 Plymouth Savoy with a 200 mile per hour V10 Viper drivetrain. I called Chip Booth up and said, hey Chip, what do you think about a 54 Plymouth? You know, and at the time the Viper thing had just started coming out. It was the new thing. And, um, you know, I said Viper V10, you know, with some funky headlights or something, you know, convertible, like a, maybe a hard top, whatever. And I'm talking to him on the phone for about five minutes and he goes, hey, go to your fax machine. So I go over there and while I was talking to him, he did a little sketch of, uh, just a loose sketch of one. What started as an idea in a loose sketch turned into one unbelievable car. At that moment in time, you know, I'm saying to myself, you know, this is it. I mean, how, how can we possibly build anything better than this? I think it took a lot of courage to start with a 54 Plymouth and develop it into this car with the, the lines and the proportions and the styling that it has and furthermore to paint it green and to use two stock Chrysler colors to do it. They aren't custom colors. And to make it all come off like this car does, uh, pretty amazing. I have a Viper, I'm a Viper fan, and uh, it's, it's similar. Uh, the power to weight ratio is similar. Uh, it'll, you know, you can whip it through a turn. I wouldn't feel comfortable throwing it in like a, a Viper, but uh, uh, that's only because of uh, probably my respect for the car. The idea of using a 54 Plymouth for the base of a street machine is a bold move, but Troy saw the makings of a beautiful custom car in this Savoy. The finished hot rod got a lot of attention because of its unique look, but it also got a lot of attention from the engineering world because of what was under the hood. We took the sniper up to Chrysler's R&D Center for the Viper development and put it on display once, and Tom Gale and all the engineers, we had a steady stream all day long. But one of the things the race division was interested in was the way that we had brought the air into the engine and uh, they asked, they started asking real technical questions about how it flowed and if it performed okay. And we had to tell them, well, it performs good for us, but you gotta remember we're in an alley so we're building this car. <laughs> it's true that a shop can make a car, but it's also true that a car can make the shop. That car launched Rad Rides. That was one of my favorites. Um, we actually were at the auction when they sold it, and I was, I really didn't want to see it go, but we always move on and try and do bigger and better things. And the next big thing takes a lot of work and a lot of time. The one thing these guys are always going to see is a great deal of metal work. So even though he's a new school builder, Andy here has already perfected many old school techniques. Well, right here we got uh, two panels are welded together, and out in kind of in the middle of the panel, it's got a big high spot in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to shrink that out, and basically what we do is take the torch and we heat a little bitty spot up, and then we take the hammer dolly and dolly it together to push all the molecules together, and then you take a damp rag and you put the damp rag on that spot, and it clinches the molecules so the metal will stay in that area. And then after that, you go through your filing and hammer and picking process, and eventually you just bring all the metal up to shape. Metal shaping is an art form. With hundreds of methods at hand, each fabricator finds his favorite tools, like this bullseye pick that Andy uses to smooth out the low points in the metal. This metal file isn't being used to smooth anything out, it's being used to reveal the highs and lows in the surface. Then a myriad of other tools, like this pick and this leather mallet, come into play. It's work like this that will force you to never question why these cars take so long to build. Jared takes us to the tail end of his 37 Ford, a place where you'd think that less detail would be in focus. Once we carried over some of the design elements from the rest of the car, the back looked really boring, looked fat and looked heavy. Um, so what we wanted to do is take all the things like the exhaust, license plate, taillights, things you're going to find that, on any car and just try and spruce them up a bit on this one. Um, we'll start with the license plate. We brought all this area down three inches and that gave us room to put a plate in here, recess it. Um, the normal license plate, the stock one, you're going to find in the trunk lid. We wanted that all smooth. The exhaust over here, which normally you're not even going to see on this car. We wanted to 
bring it out. It's the thing a lot of times on Troy's cars you're going to find that a lot of attention is brought to. We always do some kind of cool shape there with the tailpipes and they kind of carry over from the license plate frame, follow that. These are all handmade from, you know, just flat piece of steel, everything you see here was. We used some of the existing fender and cut it and pulled it out to house the motorcycle lights that we decided to use here. The regular tail lights on a stock vehicle, you're going to find higher up on the fender and on like a little pedestal or a stanchion, they just stick up off the body. This is a lot more um, inclusive with the rest of the body. It's all smooth flowing. Though this 37 and this 40 appear to be similar, it takes a real expert to explain just how different these hot rods really are. The 40 here, I mean, it's double throwdown. We've changed everything on the car. This is the more radical one of the two. We've taken the big notice in the front here is the hoods push back five inches and down five inches. And the one thing we kept is the deluxe bubble where it comes up the grill because when we, when we change the bodies, we don't want them to look like something that you know, you walk up to and you can't identify. A lot of people won't know what it is, but a guy that knows a 40 Ford will definitely still know what it is. This car has a, a body line here at the door now with no cowl, where the more traditional car has a cowl. So this is more late models why we did it. The windshield pillars are built from scratch, really laid back. This is a more traditional car of the two. Um, it's going to be an elegant car. So what we've done is a lot of little things we've moved around within the body. And our, our joke here is, you know, you've got to move everything a quarter inch when you build one of these cars to try to make a statement. So what we've done here in the wheel, while we've moved this back, we've swept it back about three and a half inches. And a lot of people will not, from a distance, even know we've done that other than when you step back and get the picture of the wheel. You know, here's the Rad Rides thing. You know, we're big on getting the wheels way up inside the car and running big wheels and sucking the wheels under so they'll still turn. So that's something that, this is probably the most important thing that we concentrate on when we build a car, is tire and wheel fitment and stance. Stance, metal work, it's all important when you're taking the art of the custom car to a whole new level. eBay Motors is about to send its show car to Vegas. It's built by Rad Rides, and the engine and interior are about to go in. But before either of those stages can arrive, hundreds of hours of color sanding and buffing must take place first. The team installs Dynamat insulation that was never part of the original car. This type of insulation comes standard with any high-end luxury vehicle. Troy's dad, Jack, is the master of the wiring harness. It's a job that leads him to check the layout of these stock accessories, which now, after a Rad Rides makeover, are anything but stock. Now, this manifold stock from Ford, these are individual tubes through this area. You'd see all these tubes, and this is a pretty much open box, and then there's a cosmetic piece that they bolt on here. What Troy did, literally, is fill this in with weld aluminum, to, to get this effect and then it was sanded down and this was filled in. This is a pretty basic looking piece before you do this much attention to it. This is the fun part. <laughs> Jack and his son Troy have built a number of award winning cars together, which makes this more than just your average family business. The, all the guys that work for me, they are all from out of state. I mean, I can't even imagine not seeing my dad every day and then having my son, my first son, Jack born, I mean, then it was just like, there's a bond there that, uh, my, I had a daughter first, Carly, that was born, and, you know, that's, you know, just incredible, the first one, and, you know, I love her to death, but being your guy, and, you know, he's a guy, and I named him Jack, I mean, that was, that was probably the uh, best thing I could ever give back to him, was naming him Jack. You need a moment? I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. With the fast forward fastback in the color sanding and buffing phase, the team has a couple of days to get back to work on their project cars. Andy's task? Take the workings of a 99 Mustang convertible top and make it fit and work in this 1940 Ford. It was narrowed five inches in the front and then four inches at the second bow and then three inches at the last bow. So that really kind of screwed up the geometry of the whole top. And it was really a lot of work to make it just fall into the pins on the, on the windshield posts. Levi gets back to work on his custom 32 Roadster. Well, we've 
this car's been lowered about four inches compared to a stock 32 Ford. So in order to do that, we had to cut out this whole wheel wear area here and move it up two inches for the wheel to look right in there. And we, we're using really big wheels, 19 inch wheels in the back. And the wheels are really neat because uh, they look like steel wheels, but they're made out of billet aluminum. Today I've been working on the rear frame rails. We're totally reshaping the rear frame rails. We lopped them off. Uh, we got to make them kick up a little higher so they go over the quick change rear end and we add a little more style to the shape because they're going to be seen from the outside. Um, we're making them out of, from scratch, four separate pieces all welded together. And then it, it'll be, it'll look really neat from the back too because it'll be hugging the gas tank and real close gaps around the gas tank and the body. This 21-year-old car builder has seen this project through every step of the process. And although he's come a long way in six months, this custom one-off could take years to complete. After cutting his teeth on the chicane, Jared went to work on this 37, a project that's become quite personal. There's a level of pride that you have for each little part of each car that you do. We now have the ability to take other people's money and turn it into our works of art, and that's just incredible. You know, uh, there was a time where you couldn't do that. If you were, it was furniture or houses or paintings, and now it's automobiles. And that's, uh, that's if I had an artistic talent, that's where I'd like to think it led, was in those cars. It's good to see that expression, you know, turned into reality. Down to the wire, approaching the finish line, the final buzzer is about to sound. All that applies as Troy right Trepanier here. and the team now enter the phase known as the thrash. It's these last touches that give the car that extra edge. And the whole project is turning out so well, many more new parts are finding their way in inching out the old recycled pieces that were once part of the plan. Uh, well, Troy just welded this up, then we're gonna blend it all out, but we got a little weld inside that hole, so we cleaned it out again with the end mill just to get a nice clean edge. Now I'll go around and smooth all that up so it looks like a all one piece. Levi Green has even created a special strut brace that will help an old unibody deal with a lot of new machinery and horsepower. It's just one of the many additions that have dragged this Mustang out of the late 60s and made it into a modern day show pony. The original seat folded down like this so that you could put, you know, whatever you wanted to that would go in a trunk, extend into there. And uh, we're looking at making it a fixed part so it doesn't swing down anymore. But I have to see where the panels go. Another problem we have is to see how this one doesn't fit anymore. It's not a flat base. It's inclined because when we put the new suspension under it, the shocks stick up through the floor now where they didn't before. So I have to cut out. I uh, probably just use a hole saw and cut holes into this panel so they'll sit down over their shocks. Somewhere it would snap. The last parts of the puzzle are some of the first parts that people will see. Checking out the interior and the leather before the ignition key ever gets turned. T's design took charge of all the seating and reupholstery. As they did with the original backseat, they now reupholster the armrests. They decided to scrap the high back front seats, clearing the way for a set of new custom designed buckets. Next stop, billet specialties. For that one piece that many drivers see as the single most important item in all of the interior. These days, many of them are made by the same guys who make cool wheels. And that's fitting because it's also a wheel, the one that steers the car. And it's made just like those rims that go in the tires, drilled and milled out of a solid aluminum block. Glenn Grozich runs the shop over here at Billet, and he knows style, having worked with Troy on that legendary street machine known as Chicane. And the uh, steering wheel for the car is very similar to a, an original Mustang wheel, but just in the form of a Billet steering wheel. Uh, clean lines, looks good, not overstated. 
fits the car right. With the car still in mid-thrash and SEMA only two weeks away, the only option the boys have now is to kick it into overdrive. Troy Trepanier and his rad ride shop make super fast cars, and one of the reasons is this guy. His name is John Meany. John is a man with two distinct passions, higher knowledge and high speed driving. His mix of computer skills and engine work went into both the chicane and this 88 Corvette known as the Time Machine. He's coming to Troy's for a couple of days to apply his magic to the fast forward fastback. John's the EFI guru, I mean as good as it gets, he can make anything work. So with his brains and our ability to fabricate and package, it was a, a perfect combination. He has an 88 vet with the hood shut, looks stock, but there's a 1200 horsepower motor on it. Still got this high tech prop right here? Oh yeah. yeah. We got one later. for you now when you pull up. Do you? I need a new, new rubber end on that one. They don't want to scratch nothing. This is a show car. Today, Arvid Svensson, a car magazine writer for Prime Media, pays a visit to meet this expert in electronic fuel injection known as EFI. He's a guy that makes us look good that nobody knows. All go. that trick motor stuff we've done the last 10 years, we can fabricate, but he's the guy that makes it run. Man. What he does, he actually writes the code that tells the motor what to do. I mean, it ain't like he's just messing around, putting some wires together. You can see the ellipse right here running? Yes. yes. That's showing you where it's idling at in the fuel curve, OK? All right. And as I tip in on the motor, see it goes to a different position there. All right. And this is reading my air fuel ratio right there as it's running. Okay. Want to go for a ride and check it out? I'm not sure if I want to or not. Oh, come on. All right. Uh, go get him, Biggs. Oh, yeah. Have fun, Arvin. 1,200 horsepower. <laughs> I'm ready. It's just so funny because if he walked in or his personality is so awesome, you know, we, you know, be messing around or acting like knuckleheads, but then it's like, you know, you, when he walks away, you tell somebody, he's like, dude, that's the smartest guy I know. Arvid will never be the same. Uh, Arvid, uh, that? Uh, huh? Does that get your heart racing or what? Uh, <laughs> that, that car awesome is what? an animal is and he's awesome? insane. <laughs> Is it's like awesome? there's like no end to the power. I told you, there's just the no torque end curves right to the, the power. Back. You step on it and it just, it's like being in a, an F-16. John and his laptop made an electronic record of their flight and he reviews every detail of the trip with Arvid. So we did the gear change here at about, looks to be about 6,850 RPM right here. And then it fell back down to about 5,000 and accelerated back up to about seven which we were going uh, 134 miles an hour in less than uh, a couple seconds. It's an awesome car. Thank you. Thanks for the ride. No problem. I'm never gonna do it again, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> the next day, all the focus is on the Mustang. And as he has done with many of the other Rad Rides cars, John and his laptop reprogram the Mustang's computer. What do you uh, wanna shift the one to at? Why don't Out of first? Yep. Probably 35, 40, does that sound right? Mixing fuel injection with data code, bringing gas and oil into the world of high tech, guys like John help builders like Troy take a super engine to the height of its potential. I like the way you set the mass airflow meter to take the cold air and from down out yep. here. Didn't miss oh, yeah. a thing on this G, I love it. Now that the car's really close, you know, it's been a big, big push here. You know, it's been four months of working on it real hard and the guys give a good effort and it's just the same way for us this time of year all the time doing a SEMA show because the SEMA show is where we really bring out our new car. It's going to be a real good show this year. SEMA. It's where those who make and buy car parts congregate and celebrate. The annual festival of everything and anything that goes on a car. It's where the art of customizing is taken to a whole new level. Show cars are made to get buyers over to the product booths, so it's a great place to see hot rods and street machines. It's where the Quadra Deuce came out of hiding. It's also where this Rad Rides masterpiece was seen, the Sniper. Chicane was Troy's big hit last year. And this year, 
SEMA will catch the first glimpse of Troy's newest street machine. Four months ago, a beat-down old Mustang arrived on the doorstep here in Mantino, Illinois. And now, a souped-up muscle car is ready for its Las Vegas premiere. But first, a little test drive. When the Fast Forward Fastback arrived in Las Vegas, it was the hit that it was reborn to be. And for as much appreciation as it received on the convention hall floor, this is where the car really likes to live. Out on the road and driven hard, like any Rad Rides hot rod. So, with yet another success to the credit of his team and his shop, Troy Trepanier is currently going at his usual speed of fast. And if you happen to see him, the odds are he'll be passing you. Thanks for watching. For all the gearheads here at Rides, I'm Jason Priestley. See you next time.